Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, Anja Management. Uh, today you've got me as a sub. Brian is unavailable, unfortunately, but I'm here with Johnny. And uh, it should it should be a good one, Johnny. It should be. A I've good left one. my glasses on. I've like, like <laughs> yeah. Ray Charles. Too cool for sorry. school. Too Hang cool on, for sorry. school. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Catch you in a sec. Okay. Hello all and welcome to uh, Anja Management. Uh, bit of a drastic weekend, isn't it, Johnny? I mean, listen, ang anger management. It's anger management. Today. Anger management. There we go. It yeah. is anger management. It's often anger management, but today, yeah, it's anger. Listen, it's going to be raw. It's going to be heartfelt. Could get a bit emotional, um, but um, it's it's basically just going to be honest, honest on how we're all feeling right now after after that and uh, <laughs> yeah. i'll tell you well why don't you dave right it's good to good to be on with you why don't you um have uh mention a few people who might be in the room yeah yeah so um i'll do obviously the initial running and how we do things so obviously you know we do the negatives my camera's gone weird we, we do positives oh, first today I think oh we'll do yeah positive. we're doing positives first we'll do the negatives we'll do the special men special mentions we'll talk on Ange and then obviously just thoughts and feelings of everything basically so yeah <laughs> and then we'll go to the comments bear with me this is the first time doing this so it's complete shambles just like Tottenham are at the moment so give me a chance so big up Chris Agabar welcome mate welcome uh early birthday lunch happy birthday yeah hit the likes guys just to yeah, say hit the likes. Brian's not here and Ben's not here um, but it's uh, David and myself here today. But the channel needs your support, and the best way to show your support for the algorithm is to just hit the like button. It's not painful; it's just that button there. <clears throat> but it really uh, helps us. Yeah. But uh, I think we're all feeling hurt, angry, upset, and a few emotions. I just, I, I just want to say one thing, uh, Dave, before we sort of kick yeah. off. Right to the people who hate on me because I've said it for weeks now about how I felt about Angie's system, right? Okay. I understand that you're devotees and, you know, I don't want Ange to fail, but I'm blown if I'm going to sit here of all the years I've been watching football, right? To sit here and just bury my head in the sand and pretend it's, you know, it's not happening, you know, that, that, that this isn't happening. You know, um, we all know the bigger picture, but we're here to comment on all this so uh let's uh let's go who else is in the room who else have we got we've got daryl daryl we've got uh tweak shem tan uh brian's unwell at the moment uh he's just got some results back we're not going to talk about it but um fingers crossed he's on the road to recovery soon but shem i'll make up for the rant all right yeah <laughs> yeah johnny can make up the rant this is my first time so i'm just running things and letting johnny have some fun and yeah and Gregory, Colin, Prenanda, mate, Prenanda. So, yeah, so let's get into it, Johnny. Let's do this. Let's right, start okay. off. So, listen, look, let's start with the good points, okay? Positive. So, look, there aren't many, let's be honest. Look, we are seven points better off than last season, you know, and uh, we're, we, we are only 13 points off the top and we are in transition. And, you know, we are in fourth place, fifth place. I mean, only Spurs could be fourth place and without the opposition playing the team, end up fifth. Um, only us. Um, and we, we, we know that, you know, having lost Harry Kane and where we were at the start of the season, most people, not myself, I thought we'd finish fifth, sixth, would have 100% grabbed the position we're now in. Um but it doesn't disguise the fact that yesterday was an absolute horror show for me. Absolute horror show. There's no disguise in it. Dave, any positives uh, on your side? Um, we didn't concede more goals. I mean, it, it, it just, what, what could go wrong kind of did go wrong in that sense, you know, tactically on the pitch. Eddie Howe set Newcastle up perfectly against us. I mean... 
it's 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 struggle for me at times when we play certain teams that adjust the way they play to go against the, our our style of football. Is that a positive? Well, no, it's not really a positive. No, but what I'm trying to say is, I think I think the only positive I can bring out of that as the football inside is <laughs> we didn't get any more injuries by Poro, and hopefully that's not bad. <laughs> Because... I mean, I, I sometimes when when Porro went off, I you know I sometimes think when he was on that ground, excuse me, eff it, I'm out of there, right? Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, I would have wanted to be on that. Let's just go straight to the negatives. Uh, let's go straight to the negatives. Don't yeah, let's, let's go to the negatives. So right, let's not beat around the bush. You know how you can have seventy three percent possession, right, and lose four nil. I think it was the the first time in. I don't know. I don't know if I heard it. Fifteen or sixteen years that a team had dominated seventy three percent possession and lost four nil. Right. I know. <laughs> um, going to what you said. Going to what you said. Right. And you know we can come back to this later. But I remember when I, I unfortunately went to Wolves for the away leg, and after the game he was invited onto Monday Night Football, Gary O'Neill, and he demonstrated how he beat. And he demonstrated it on the screen yeah. very eloquently, brilliantly, with all the infographics, how he beat Angie's system. Right. And you know what? That's been the blueprint. That's been the blueprint for other teams. And guess what? He came to White Hart Lane or the Tottenham Stadium, whatever you want to call it. And he did exactly the same thing again, because we don't change the system. We are predictable. Um it's beyond it's beyond a joke now. I, I, I've I've gone on about this day for such a long time uh, and got a, a lot of abuse over it. But um, you know, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, Gary O'Neill's done it, and others have followed suit, haven't they? Yeah, the issue we have is like you were saying then. Our system, our tactics are so naive at times, and they're so structured in one way that it's simple to play against us. You set up in a counter-attacking stance against us, you're going to win that game. And it seems like at times the players haven't got a clue what they're meant to do. They just seem like you go there, you go there, just do whatever you want. But you it's... see them pointing, don't you? You see them, you like pointing at each other. You should have been here, or I should have been yeah. there. There's some confusion. There's definitely a confusion. Yeah, a huge one, and there is big issues in that. And. You know, as a manager, you've got to look at the team, look at the, what's going on on the pitch and say to yourself, right, you know, this ain't working, that's not working, let's tactically change it. But Ange is coming across beyond naive at times with that. And we're not going to get anywhere in the future if he can't adapt and change against I mean, look at that start. You know, before the game yesterday, I said, look, you know, Newcastle are riddled with injuries, OK? Their defence is, is threadbare, to put it mildly, right? They have yeah. Bruno Gomesh, who's a terrific player, and they had long staff. And that's about it in the middle of the park. We had to dominate the middle. But I said, there's one area where they really could hurt us, right? And that was Ixac, Gordon, and um, what's his name? Uh, oh, God, my bride's gone blank there. Uh, Ixac, Gordon, and Barnes, right? Bonds, yeah. And I said, we're, 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 they're going to expose us and run into the space. And that's exactly what happened. And my point here is, I should not be able to just turn around and tell people what's going to happen. But they, we know what's going to happen. And the reason is, is he's not going to change. He's not going to change. He, you know, you heard Eric Dyer say in the week that we don't do tactics. We don't go over tactics. You know, I, I just think it's unbelievable. I don't know if it's naivety, disrespect or whatever. I've mentioned it many times on here. You know, if I'm a boxer, I know it's maybe not the right analogy, but if I'm a boxer and someone's telling me next week you're going to fight Joe Bloggs, right, from America, I'll send you the tapes. I don't need to, I don't need to uh, look at the tapes, Dave, right? I know I'm going to fight my fight. Yeah, but he's a Southport. I don't care. I'm going to concentrate on my game. And that's what we do. And then you'd walk into the ring and get your face smashed in. And that's <laughs> yeah. what's happened. You know, let's be honest, right? I, unfortunately, was also at Brighton. 
when we got absolutely smashed to bits by a Brighton team who had to put an 18-year-old at right back who'd never played there before, right? Fulham. I mean, absolutely destroyed at Fulham. Yeah. And Newcastle. And let's be honest, there have been other games, David, where the same thing could have happened. The same thing could have happened. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you. This is not the first time we've seen this type of situation on the pitch. It's not like this is an, an anomaly. It's just other teams didn't have the ability to score that many goals past us at times. And it, it, it is a worry. And I, I want to bring up this comment and just a little comment just to go again, just to say about this. Managers do need to adapt. It's, it's not just up to the owner to change the environment because we've seen it under many other managers who didn't have the players at the time or didn't have this situation and that, and they still adapted against opposition. It's not just simple as saying that it's the owners. Ange needs to change and just change and adapt to what's happening on the pitch at the time. That's why he's a manager. He can't just he can't. stand there and let the same things go. And I mean, look at the spaces yesterday. Van der Ven twice was left completely on his own with no other defenders near him. Like nothing changed, David, right? I, you know what I mean? I, listen, look, we all know what happened to Klopp in his first season and Pep in his first season. We've heard all the narrative. We know all about it, right? What I'm saying to you is I don't want to see my manager when he's going absolutely to pot, stood there, right, with his hands in his trouser pockets playing paint pocket billiards, right? You know, you know, Klopp, if he'd have seen that, his false teeth, those big bulging teeth would have popped out of his mouth had he seen <laughs> that, right? Okay, I want to see something happen, something change. I'm not an Ange hater, right? I'm not an Ange hater, but I'm not going to sit there and watch that crap. It was yeah. crap, guys. Stop making apologies for it, you guys who are saying, uh, you know, I don't hate Ange as a human, great, but I'm he's, he's here as a, a football boss to turn our club around. Have we improved? Yes. Have we, are we progressed since last season under the toxicity of uh, Conte? 100%. Have we progressed since that first 10 games of the season? No. I'm sorry. We have regressed. No? Yeah, I agree. But firstly, big up Michael Hellman for the £5 super chat. Appreciate it. Ange ball equals Conte ball with more flair. Same results. Van der Ven gets a pass. He's been brilliant thus far. Cheers, lads. Come on, you Spurs. Uh, I don't think it is. See, I, I spoke to someone this morning about the way Ange plays football, yeah? And it's the complete opposite. Under Conte, we overcrowded the defence. Under Ange, we overcrowd the attack. And that's the issue. We leave our defence open and a midfield and attacking is completely overcrowded. You've got when the fullbacks invert, the wingers try and stay out wide, but then it's easy to eliminate the wingers when the fullbacks are there because you've got no one overlapping. Send two players out to a winger, he's gonna to have to pass the ball back. Then that whole attacking phase is null and void. And that's what my issue my issue with it is, at times is is we overcrowd the attack. What do you think about that, Johnny? I mean, look, look, Deserby's outsmarted us, right? Deserby, Silver. How, and let's be honest, Thomas Frank almost did it. He, he, look how many injuries he had. Look at Bournemouth when we played at Irola, right? 25 attempts at goal. How do we allow Bournemouth 25 attempts at goal at our own ground? At our own ground. This is not, this is not a new thing. We are so inverted. We have got, look, with respect to Ange, right? Okay. This system might work in Japan. It might work in Australia, it might well work in Scotland. This is the Premier League. If you think you've come to the Premier League, the home of some of the greatest managers that ever fitted, that ever were in the game, and you've come up with a new system that no one is going to work out, that is suddenly a revolutionary idea, no, I'm sorry, right? Yes, you know, Klopp, and also they 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 didn't they struggled in their first season to get the players into adapt, but constantly leaving the space behind. Um, Anthony Gordon created six chances in that first half. Six, six. Yeah. We can't even defend ninety or sixteen corners we gave away. Sixteen corners, absolutely, 
absolutely horrendous. And listen, let me get you. Let, let's get started, right? Because you know I've gone on about this for weeks and weeks and weeks. In fact, months. Set pieces, right? Johnny Viola, right? Okay, unbelievable. We scored twenty three percent of our goals last season from set pieces. We were unbelievable, right? Suddenly, Tottenham were rubbish. Was suddenly fantastic. Okay, so what we to believe, right? Ange doesn't want him. He gets rid of him. And what we're supposed to believe, right, that Mason and Yedinek have stolen Vio's uh, black book of set pieces. <laughs> I have never seen anything like it in my entire life to defend him, right? I did school kids football and Sunday football for kids, right? I've never in my entire life set up for a corner having all 11 in the box zonal marking, ever, 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 ever. I have one on the halfway line to give their defence something to think about, which takes normally two players out. I have one between that line. I have one at the edge of the box. I have one on, on, the, on the, each of the posts and the rest of the defending marking a man. Therefore, you don't have all of their players in. So what do we do? We play 11 men, zonal marking. Nobody goes up for a corner. We've conceded 11 goals. From that eleven, yeah. right? It's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing. And even if we clear the ball, David, right? What's happening? Where's no one there, is it? So the ball's <laughs> coming straight back. The ball's coming straight back out for another corner. Have another go. Have another yeah. go. Have another go. Right? I can't bear it. It's it's the most naive football. Kulu was marking uh, Fabian Shelf for that for that last one. For sure, just sure, just. I mean, what, why is Kulu? Why are you man marking? Shah scores from his head. Look how many goals he scored this season from set pieces. Why yeah. aren't you marking him? Why isn't one of the main people marking him? Why is Kulu marking him? There's no structure at all. And it's not just it's not just um, the corners. It's the free kicks. Let's be serious. It could have been seven or eight. They missed chances. They hit the post. They uh, Gordon hit uh, missed one uh, again near the end. It's embarrassing. And why is nothing changing? I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't believe. I don't believe in coaching. You know, the set pieces. Chelsea have just nicked um, Brentford's set piece coach. Yeah. Set pieces are a fundamental part of the football. Watch Arsenal set pieces. I don't want to bring them up, but I watch Arsenal set pieces. They're like NFL plays, right? They call the numbers right, and they do. You know, they have three players uh, when they're attacking, for example. They have three players at the back post running towards the ball, whereas they have then two players on the outside of the box running straight in towards the ball. What does it do? Causes panic and pandemonium in the defence, right? Yeah. We, 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 we just, are, honestly, I, I am staggered at the naivety of it. Like, look, if it's an issue, David, right? It's not a problem. We're in transition. I understand we're in transition. But transition means we screwed up last week. Let's address it. Eat, yeah, sleep, not do the repeat. same thing. <laughs> Eat, sleep, repeat. Week yeah. after week. It's dysfunctional. It's defun dysfunctional football. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's all right. This is what it's about, mate. This is what it's about. And a comment popped up earlier. I can't find it again. But someone said, is this an Ange Bassett session? No, it's not. We, Bill, as I'm fans, talking about... Bill, Bill, I know you're being sarcastic there, right? I'm talking about for set pieces. If you think 11, if if you think 11, I don't know if you are being sarcastic, but if you are, right, if you think setting up 11 inside our box, right, for zonal marking, right, is 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 fine and, and conceding 11, 11 uh, goals from that position, then I, I'm lost for words, honestly. Really am. Yeah, Johnny, even in the game, I was watching, right, yeah? Brennan Johnson, Mark, is, is it Dan Byrne? Yeah. You're talking, you're, Six you're talking seven, one of the corners players. And you've got Brennan Johnson, who's not exactly strong. He's got strength about him, but he's not that strong, going against a Dan Byrne. And it's like, it for me, it's that naivety is where it's like Andrew said to the players, go on the pitch and just do what you want. That's how it feels at times. Now, we've seen it in games where we can play some exciting, fantastic, incredible football. But then you see it where when a team sets up against us with a good manager like Eddie Howe can read the tactics and change his system to go against us and we still play the exact same, 
it, it's just naivety across the entire board, including the players. This is not just on Ange. We're just bringing out negatives. We'll go on to the players and other things yeah. like that. But at the moment, we're talking about Ange in itself and how he is being naive at times and how he's not adapting to the situation. And yeah, it's 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 becoming a big problem, especially when Newcastle was so decimated that we had a full team. That's practically our full team. And yet we still were naive in every aspect of that game. Naive in attack, naive in midfield, naive in defence. But do you understand what I'm saying, David, right? Yeah. About, like, if you've got 11, right, so you've got 11 in the box. If you put one on the halfway line, straight away you're taking their 11 that are in our box trying to score a goal. Suddenly you're taking, uh, sorry, 10 that are in the box. Suddenly you're taking two away straight away. Because yeah. one, two have to carry one, right, to look after the one on the halfway line, right? Yeah. And then you've got one between the halfway line and uh, and the, the box and one on the edge of the box in case the ball comes out, right, and he can clear it or break. We can't even break from that. Yesterday, we conceded two goals from Sonny losing the ball in one yeah. incident, one play, one ball. Sonny loses the ball, bang. Straight long, right, for Gordon. Loses the ball, bang, it's uh, in the back of the net. That happened twice. How do you how do you do that? How do you do that? Because because we 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 are not set up. We are set up. We we play this. Um, we're we're told to be progressive from the back. Sorry, the flies are back. No, it's all right. They're attacking you again. I just saw one <laughs> just come from nowhere. Right. I mean, it must be fly season, and that's <laughs> dive bombing me. Um, I just. I don't understand it. I mean, listen, let's talk yesterday. We had a, a, an XG, expected XG, right, of 0.74, right? The lowest of any team played yesterday. And that includes Luton. Luton, yeah. who have been absolutely smashed to bits, right? They had a better XG against Man City away than we did. You know, I, I honestly and truthfully, I am, I am at a loss... You know, the other thing is, is, you know, against um, against Forrest, could see it wasn't going right. What did he do? I applauded it. He made two changes, took off Basuma, took off Sar, and brought on uh, Benton Core and, um, and uh, what do you call it? And Hoybier. Yesterday, we were 10 times worse. And I'm expecting major changes at half time. It's got to be changed up. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not <laughs> I was one. so shocked at that. I was so thinking, shocked at that. Like, are you taking the are you taking the P? Are you taking the P? This was a repeat of Fulham. Fulham, yeah. he waited until we were four nil down. Well, we were three nil down, but they scored a fourth goal and it was disallowed before he thought, you know what? I better make a change, right? I don't know. I don't know what goes inside his head. I don't want him to get the sack, right? I'm not hoping he's uh, unsuccessful and loses his job. But unfortunately, in my opinion, unless he pulls his head out of his ass, right, and starts addressing some of these issues and tweaking. Like, why can't you have, okay, Poro, you're inverted. Destiny, you stay back, right? Like a Conte system, one went forward, one went back. Yeah. Right. They took it in turn. So we had cover. Right. There's just an arrogance. There's just too there's, there's arrogance or naivety. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. See, that's that's the problem. We've got young players who are naive in the football as it is. We've seen it throughout the whole season with the likes of Dogi and that and stuff. Them slight naiveties. When you add naive, naive tactics alongside that. There's big issues, and we've seen that numerous times. But anyway, we'll move on from that. But just before can we just do, say, please... Go on, sorry, go say, on. Yeah, I was just going to say, so what you just said there about the naivety is my whole point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you tell, if you tell 19 and 20-year-olds, um, no, I don't. No, I don't, Savas, right? You know, that's, that's the problem. You can't say there's something wrong 
without wanting him out. I've been very clear. I don't want him to fail. No, was he my first choice? No, he wasn't, right? He wasn't. Gallardo and Slot and Amarin were my choices. They were my three, right? But he's come here and, not, you know, I embrace it. But, I, you know, I can't not say anything. Um, but my point is what you brought up there about the naivety. We've got 19, 20, 21 year olds, right? Who Ange goes out and he says, right, that's how I want you to play. Okay. This is, this is, this is how I want you to play. Unfortunately, when you're 19, 20, 21, you lose focus. Okay. Yeah. You do lose focus. So with a young player, if we were playing with 28 and 30 year olds on there, I could expect Ange to be sitting there with his arms folded or his hands in his pocket um, and, you know, allow them to get on with it. But I feel personally that there needs to be interaction when it's not going right to express to those 19, 20, 21 year olds on the pitch. Guys, remember what I said. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. You know, by the time we get in at half time and he gives them a half team team, team talk, we're three nil down. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or two nil down or, or whatever it may be. And Brighton, you know, People can say I'm being unreasonable, right? When you travel away, I go to a lot of away games, put a lot of miles in and I have to watch that. And those poor guys that went, uh, people like Billy Ian and others who went to the to the game yesterday and Kern and all those others, thousands that went up there, they deserve better than what they, uh, they got yesterday. And we've got every right to question it. But no, I'm not Ange out at this stage. No. No. And th th that we, we have to alliterate that. You know, when we do this show, Woo! it's the whole point of breaking down everything, right? And it's about not just giving praise. There's no point praising a bad performance. It's just illogical. We need to break down every metric of negatives, positives, everything. And within a situation like that, we can't do positives. It's not impossible to bring out positives from a display like that. So it's going to be mostly negative. That doesn't mean Johnny's and out or... He hates this player or hates this. He's breaking down the negatives of right. the entire situation. And that's what we're trying to do here. That's the whole point of this show is to just get it all out and say how it is, basically. And, yeah, Ange has had a big problem there. And we will call that out because it's the only way we can do it. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know yeah. what else you're meant to do. You know, what would this show be? And your management... OK, let's only talk about the, the stuff that went right. Let's ignore everything that went wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the players, the players are as responsible as the manager, OK? They were all to blame yesterday, OK? Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go, Johnny. Let's move on from this then. Let's go about the players, yeah? Um, negative players. Let's talk about them. Okay. Uh, well, just players in general, right? So Yeah. But Let's before go. we do, Johnny, sorry. Hey, user, yeah, thank you ever so much for that. Super chat. Please explain, even with new players coming in the summer window, how this will change things for us. If the manager refuses to change tactic, we suffered exactly the same with Fulham, Wolves, Newcastle, etc. Well, for me, I'll start this off. Um, I'm on. hoping this is this is literally the transition period for us this season. I hope next season and show some willingness to adjust tactics. He has more players in that can fit the system in a sense that if he wishes to change it up, he can do. I just, that's my hope this season. We all pretty much writ off this season at the beginning anyway. No one thought we'd be in the position we would. I think fans are angry at the moment at the fact that we know we could be in a better position if little adjustments were changed. And I feel that's why we're all hard, hard done by. We spent years and years and years dealing with mediocrity season after season failing at this failing that we went out of two cups beyond earlier than what we should have with the players we've got we're, we're now struggling against teams that we should be beating in a sense because they're struggling you know we've, we're playing one game a week can you imagine if we had champions league fa cup and carabao cup it, it, would, it would be it would be it would be horrendous but yeah, I'll let Johnny carry on from that. Thank well, you very listen, much. From, from what I'm told, you know, it's brutal, the training. The training's brutal, which obviously is killing them. Look, for me, I've always said we should only back, you know, your fans say we should back the manager 100%. I've never believed that, right? We should have an ethos of how we're going to play our football 
we should have an ethos of the type of coach we're going to go for, a progressive coach, not zigzag up and down of the type of coach, progressive, regressive, progressive, you know, yeah. pragmatic, <laughs> yeah, up, yeah. Uh, up and down, because what happens is your squad is never going to match your manager. So what I'm trying to say here is that I believe we only back Ange 70 to 80% in the summer. Why? Because I feel Fabio and the team should be looking at players that progress us as a club. The average stay of a manager is 18 months. I'm not going to have a whole squad, right? <laughs> I'm not going to have a whole squad based on only Ange Ball, OK? Yeah. It needs to be what happens if Ange left tomorrow, Ball, OK? And that's why you need a balance between, yeah. you know, Fabio finding players that are right. And let me tell you, for all those apologists who say that, oh, he doesn't have his squad and he doesn't have his players... He's approved Vicario, Mickey van der Ven, uh, James Madison, Brennan Johnson, Timo Werner, um, to name but a few. And he's uh, more than happy, he said many, many times with Destiny and Pedro Porro. So, yeah, you know, to the apologists out there, he doesn't have his players. He doesn't have his players, you know, like wait to the summer, wait for another free transfer windows. OK, look. I'll give him that. He doesn't have all the players, the strength and depth, the drop off. We'll get all of that. But come the summer, when he's afforded again uh, to to buy those players that he wants, that he wants, there can be no excuses next season. I'll afford him the excuses here, but we just want to see change. I think I think we're all in agreement, David. Right? Have we seen in these last few weeks where Ange would come out? And he say, for example, yesterday, how for the first time played three centre backs, right? But reverted to a five at the back when they were in defensive mode. It's the first time they've done it this season. Okay, yeah. what did he do? He changed tactics. So if we, for example, for once we tried Dragusin, Mickey Van der Ven, and Romero in a back three, and we would say, wow. He's trying to do something and it doesn't come off. We would say, you know what? We're in transition. He's yeah. trying new things. He's trying stuff. And that's what I'm saying. You know, if we saw signs of that, then we would say, you know what? The only thing I saw that I, I thought to myself, wow, you know, could this be something is when he took off Sonny yesterday. Sonny should have gone off at half time. I must say, yeah. Hasten to add, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's go players. Yeah, so um, just want to quickly say one thing. Please like and subscribe. This is my first doing this hosting with Johnny, and it'll be great if, obviously, you can get a load of the likes and subscriptions built up off this. We're yeah, players. Today. Yeah, I know, yeah, that's all it's going to be. My face plastered all over to it. They want Ange out? No, we don't. No, we don't. No. But, yeah, so let's move to the players. Uh, I'll start. I'm going to start with Sonny. You know, um, captain, the leader. He, he was he was terrible yesterday. He he couldn't keep hold of the ball. But it's not just been yesterday. It's been a fair few games. He's been struggling. I don't know why it is. I don't know if it's overplayed, if he's tired, what's going on. But at the moment, Sonny is struggling massively. Um, every time he receives the ball, he's losing it pretty much instantly. The two situations yesterday, that pretty much led to a goal. Obviously, it's not all down to Sonny. There is abundance of players behind him. But when you're in an attacking phase and you lose the ball that easy, you're 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 knackered. You're you're always on the back foot, and yeah, I think Sonny for me, he's got big big issues at the moment. I don't know why, but I think personally, next game either goes out on the wing or gets dropped completely. If Richarlison's fit enough to play, I think Sonny needs to be in that situation now because it's just not good enough. It really isn't. Um, how do you feel about Sonny's display over this game in the past couple of games, Johnny? Look, I look. I don't want to upset. South Korea. No. Nope. Um, already had enough fat whilst declared against me for making comments. But listen, look, the thing is, um, I believe it's quite interesting, actually, because all the hate Richarlison has had, right? And he's received a lot of hate. What's he got? 10 goals, uh, four assists, four is it? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's missed, he's missed half the season with injury and mental issues and what have you. 
let me tell you something. Boy, did we need him yesterday, right? Sonny cannot play down the middle. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I, you know, I love him, but you know, he's got to go wide. We, he, he cannot play against a strong back line. He just gets, no. he just bounces off of them. He cannot. He's not effective. You know, give him space out left. Put the ball out to him out left, and he will do better than uh, Timo out on that left hand side. Yes, we need. We need the bruiser effect, the shithousery of Richarlison. Because Richarlison makes those runs. I know people don't rate him and all the rest of it. But what he does is he runs and he's bullying, takes players with him and allows space for the midfielders to run into. Sonny can't do that. Um, I He was terrible yesterday. I mean, as I said, twice he lost that ball in transition where he shouldn't have done. Bang. Long ball straight up to Golden. Bang, bang, goal. And then again for the third. It was it was horrendous. It was horrendous. It was like in a quick motion. Uh, Howe told them, get the ball up quick and we'll catch them exposed. Um, yeah. We're not even changing the system. Sonny, go left. He can't play through the middle. I, I am seriously worried, though, that Richarlison's knee, which I was told, you know, four or five weeks ago, could keep him out for, for two or three months, right, with that niggle. I'm hoping he, he he comes back because we desperately need him against Arsenal. Because mm. you know, could you imagine? I'm not being funny. Gabriel and Saliba, eh, out the way, Sonny. Right. Whereas yeah. Richie, Richie will give as good as he gets. Right in yes. a game match up like that. So yeah, very poor. My other, my next one um, will be. I've got to mention it. Look, I'm sorry, Mickey. From hero to zero uh, yesterday, um, I thought he was gone uh, roller skating. I, I, I've, I don't know what quite what was going on. I think the um, the commentators were being a little unfair. Wasn't it an Arsenal? Um, wasn't it Arsenal commentator yesterday? Uh, was I it think so, yeah, we always usually get the Arsenal. Ones yeah, yeah, of course. Would, you know, yeah. nothing biased, nothing biased. But um, no, no, of course not. <laughs> he did have a good point that when you're coming in to defend, you can't come in at that pace and then check back and try to get back to the, to the other side. Um, but saying that, I, I do think it's it, it's a little unfair because the amount of ground uh, that he has to cover is insane. It's absolutely insane. Um, I think the system puts so much pressure and exposes our, our our players so so much. I just I just don't think it's right. I really don't. Um, yeah. And I, I I think you know, funny enough, he got in two or three really good tackles <laughs> when we were three nil down and one to stop <laughs> us going five nil down. Um, but I don't know. Yesterday it just was not his day. And I've got to tell you, and I've mentioned this many times before, he has amazing pace. Um, he doesn't bring the ball out as much as he did for Wolfsburg, but his biggest weakness is getting exposed week in and week out. He cannot head the ball. He's terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was for the, um, the what's the name was it for the Forest goal where he got underneath it. He completely missed it. And they scored so, yeah, with yeah. The header. yeah, that was it. By the way, that was a corner as well, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. No, no, that was a corner and then he scored. But yeah, look, um... I just, <clears throat> go on. I was just going to say, I just want to ask you about the Van der Ven situations with the goal. Obviously, you know what I mean? He made the mistakes. You know, he was moving too fast. He couldn't control himself that well. Do you think as well, it was obviously the other players in the defence as well, leaving him so open? Because 100%. if you look at both goals, they were in a situation where he's left having to track back again on his own. And it's like, at times, it seems the defence is like, we've got Mickey. It's OK. He's going to just outpace every player. Yeah. When you're in a situation like with players like Gordon's, the Isaacs, who can control the ball, they know how to move it quickly. Pace ain't going to help you in that situation. You need your other defenders to be there. And I found it like Romero at times. He weren't there when he should have been. Adogi, Porro, they were always up front and leaving them just on their own. Well, because because David, right? We they're playing our our Porro and our Adogi, right? Are playing as tens. Right. So what do you do? 
right? You put the ball straight up as quickly as possible while your two wing, your two backs are <laughs> up there, right? That's what you do. That's how you counter attack it. But the thing is, I, 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 I took a screenshot. I, I haven't got it now of when they were doing the playback for the goal, the positioning. So when Mickey got the ball for the first, right? So Son loses the ball. The ball sprayed out wide to uh, Adoji, right? Yeah. And he tries to fight off um, Gordon for the ball. But the position yeah. where they're trying to mark out Isaac, Isaac, they were too spread out. Yeah. They were too spread out. And, and for the second and the third goals, when you look at them, Porro, not Porro, um, for the second goal, sorry, for the second goal, um, they're yeah, and it not... was Porro, weren't it? Yeah, Porro kicks it back to the Well, for the but... third one, yeah, but that again, he was put in a position, Porro. Yeah. He should not have been put in. And he's stretching for the ball to try and get to the ball. In fairness to him, right, I mean, they will come on to him in a minute, but... Yeah. Um, for those for those goals, Romero um, and him don't seem to have that understanding. When you're when you're that spread out, one has to either come come to it, and if you're going to come to the player and challenge him, the other's got to fall back into the space in case you don't make it. But there doesn't yeah. seem to be. There certainly wasn't that understanding yesterday. You know, no. we're conceding that no team has ever qualified for the Champions League. Um, scoring more than uh, Newcastle was the highest ever, 1.34 goals per game. Yeah. I think five games ago, we were scoring one point, we were conceding 1.5 goals per game. I don't know what it is now, but it's it's, it's certainly gone <laughs> it's up. It's not going to look right? pretty, is it? It's certainly gone up now, you yeah. know, and we could be, we could end up, you know, getting into Europe based on other people's poor performances and other teams' behaviour. But yeah. I... Fear what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway, big up a user for the super chat again. Fairness to Van der Ven spends time mopping up others. I was exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this was Van der Ven's probably, it's his only game that he's had is like his worst game for us. Correct. He's been absolutely outstanding. But only when you have a bad game, game like that. Yeah, it's only the third game he's been on the losing side when he's played. So, yeah, exactly. You know. So, and I think it wasn't just solely down to him. Yes, the mistakes were made from him, but. A lot of the other players as well. If we were more structural in defence, them goals don't happen that easy. And Van der Ven isn't put in a position where he's having to use all his pace to get back and lose, basically slip on a pitch, which we've seen a lot this season. A lot of teams, and we've seen a lot of players slipping on the pitch. It's like whoever's uh, the groundsman and knowing how much to water the pitch like. So the players are on like ice <laughs> ice skates. Did you, did, you, did you see any... I mean... Uh, excuse me if I'm wrong, right? We're going yep. out there. We play one game a week. We are fighting for fourth. Right? We're yeah. fighting for it. Did you see one ounce of fight? One ounce of heart? Did you see no. commitment in tackle? The only tackle I saw that was a commitment was James Madison, like, you know, with his... Uh, he just seems angry, <laughs> I mean, angry, yeah, because he's been peed off the last two or three yeah. weeks because his game's crap at the moment. We'll come on to yeah. him. But yeah, he's yeah. just going to niggle. He was lucky he even didn't get sent off last week. Well, Let's know, move yeah. on. Yeah, so uh, next play I'll go to... Um, I'm going to go to one who people think I'm biased with and all that, but Brennan Johnson, I'll come out and say it, yeah? He was a ghost yesterday, and... Against Dan Byrne, you should be feeding Brennan the ball consistently. With his pace to beat Dan Byrne, you could, but we never did. And, I mean, he was he was non-existent throughout the game. He put in a great cross for Verma, who... I'm not going to say he did what Timo does. Does anything but puts the ball in the back of the bloody net, you know? But other than that, I think, uh, yeah, Brennan had a very quiet game. And I don't think it's a poor performance by him. I think it's the fact that we just couldn't use him as effectively as we did. But overall, it was a poor game. I think uh, I'll go on to Timo as well. Shocking yesterday. Absolutely shocking. I mean, you know, we know Timo doesn't have that great of a shooting ability. But my God, that was bad. 
two chances he could have put us up in front first off. If Sonny was in that position, I reckon then both them goals go in. Well, I, 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 I don't know about you, he said, but that bloody <laughs> goal's been bloody useless, I tell you. Right? Listen, he had a great cross. It was a great cross. I've got to tell you, everyone talks about the cross. But for me, that silky, unbelievable two touches from Benton Core when he wins the ball, oh, flips it over his head and then releases Brennan Johnson. No one's talking about that. For me, no, that no. was like, wow. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, what, that, that's that, old school. You know, that, that was just superb, right? Yeah. Brennan Johnson yesterday was Brenda Johnson again, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 listen, I, I hope he does well. I wanted Anthony Golden uh, before, okay? Um, yeah. And I... I just, nothing's changed my mind. I mean, he's got 10 goals, seven assists, and he's been out injured. Uh, and his pace, his threat, and his aggression. You see, it's the aggression. He might be yeah. small. He's not a big lad, but he's aggressive. Um, and I think it's just missing for him uh, totally. Right, I'm going to go on to my next one. Um, yeah, James on. Madison, right? I said before we signed him, that if you think you're signing a player that's going to be playing the whole season, you're mad, right? And if you speak to uh, Leicester fans, they said not only does he get injured, but when he comes back, it needs still needs six or seven uh, games for him to get into get into his groove. And that's why I said you cannot get rid of Lo Celso, right? I know a lot of people hate Lo Celso, right? Yeah. But I'm saying that's why you can't get rid of him. Well, I'm sorry. We've waited with bated breath for weeks. He had nine games. Okay. He's been back. All I've seen him do, he scored a goal that, from the cross from Brennan Johnson. But since then, all I've seen him do is get agitated, argue with a referee, remonstrate with our players, punch players, kick a few, try and elbow a few. Right. <laughs> yeah. He scored four goals all season. Four goals. Right. Yeah. I didn't like it when he came off against Fulham. 3-0 down, 66 minutes, he's coming off smiling. I'm sorry. Uh, mm. I expect my I, – I like a player when he's bought off full stock. Try and bring uh, Bruno Fernandes off, right? Oh, After yeah, 85 did, yeah. minutes, throw yeah. his shirt down, he's angry. You know, yeah. he, he, he was happy to come off that pitch. He was happy to come off the pitch. I see a guy going through the motions right now. If, yeah. if someone's telling me he's an England international, I'm sorry. He ain't an England international, right? The Celso right now, how he's not been given games. He's twice he's come on and created a goal and, and, and had a real big improvement in the team. And then he's dropped. And then he comes yeah. on the 89th minute. And again, yesterday, it's an insult. You bring yeah. him on. You bring him on in the 88th minute. You're chasing the game. You bring him on the 88th minute. Bring him on a bloody half time. Sorry, Madders, Right. Stop with the with that and the and the tattoos and and all the bullshit, right? And all the chat about how sorry you are. Show us on the pitch. You haven't shown us it, okay? Yeah. Missing M I A. Yeah, that's it. So just quickly, a uh, question from Belden Hotspur. Thank you very much. Do you agree we need a DM or one 100%. of the fullbacks to slot into a back three out of possession? Six without without with with Angie's system. Unless you get a six, forget it. And let me tell you something. In Angie's system, I think Rodri would struggle in this system because the amount of space and the amount of ground you have to cover, I think you need two sixes, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I mean, really. I swear to you. I mean, I, I, people might think I'm mad saying that Rodri would struggle in this system because he is probably the best out there, along with Paulinho. But, um, yeah, no, I, 100% we need... Uh, or a utility player like Gerstruder for me, you know, who can play yeah. six centre back or right back. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I agree. I, I see. For me, I've always thought, right, if we were going for a six in the summer, we need uh, like a Paulinia, uh, someone like that. You know what I mean? Our own. I know people are going to hate me saying this, but our own Declan Rice, a player who can cover the pitch but isn't shy. You know, Basuma a lot of time at the moment playing in that type of role. He's shy. And when he does get the ball, he's 
he's just not there to be inclined to move it the way you want a DM or a 6 2 move it and be in the positions. When Hoybier came on in that game with, um, what game did we play before Newcastle? Boris. Uh, Boris, Boris, yeah. When Hoybier came on, the structure was so much stronger because he sat in that position. Now, if you look at that and you look at what Biss is doing, you say to yourself, well, then you upgrade on Hoybier with a Paulinho or someone like that who can do that role, but just better, you know? And it, it's a big issue for us because it's not just that position we need upgrading on, but I feel like if we were to get a solid player to fill that position, we'd look much more stronger in midfield. But then yeah, it all depends on if Ange is going to keep with tactics now because... <laughs> It's all right getting these players in, but if it's to say go out on the pitch and do whatever the hell you want, it's not going to work. It is what it is, you know? mate. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it just we yeah, ain't changed. It, We're not changing, mate. Yeah, it, 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 that that's the worry. It's it's all right saying we want these players, we want all this, but if they're doing the exact same thing, nothing's going to change. No Bring matter back what Tony Galvin, mate. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so we'll move on. Um, we go? I think we we'll move on to. Uh, I mean, we've got Lee, to be special, mate. Lee, hundred percent, mate. Never a true word said. Right? Yeah. Go and ask anyone in Argentina how how that they don't understand how Lucelso is not playing every week for Tottenham. Right? Yeah. That's all I know. Anyway, get rid. We can get rid of Lucelso. He's he's got one year left. Get rid of him and bring in a proper number ten. Well, listen, I, I Richard, I agree. If we're going to get rid of him, we have to because if you think Madison can last. We played 41 games this season, the least amount of games in 19 years, OK? And we're all knackered, OK? Explain that to me. And Madison, Madison is like walking around the pitch. So, uh, I'm sorry, if we don't get another 10, we're in trouble because we've got no Harry Kane to drop into the hole and spray 25-yard passes across the pitch to fill in for Christian Eriksen, who we never replaced. So, 100%. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I if if we were to sell us Elsa, you need to bring in a player who's, you know what I mean, better than him. Because at the moment, he should be starting. I don't understand it. The Celso adds a different dimension to the way we play. When yeah. Madison, like Madison has been so off it, he's an, he's he's limiting what we can do. But we see when the Celso delivers- comes on, he, he has a different ability to pass the ball through the lines and things like that. Whereas Madison just is struggling at the moment. He can't seem to do anything. Well, what he does, Gio, he is the master of the first-time ball, right? Yeah. So he gets the ball, he hits it first time on the outside of his foot to release the front three. None of this, get the ball, pick your head up, one touch, two touch, three touch, try and break the line. No. Players, defenders, do not want to be running backwards, right? When when, when you've got a midfielder who receives the ball, ping. Right, Romero, Benton, Core, Geo, Bang, forward. Right, that's what you want. Not yeah. eight touches and then horseshoe football around the box. Right, who are you going to go for next? Uh, for me, uh, I'm I'm going to have to bring it out, like, but um, Bissuma. I thought Bissuma again was shocking. He's he, he, for a while now. It's been the same old, same old with him. Um, he, he's. I just don't think the position he's playing is right for him. It really isn't, and it's limiting what he could do. I'd rather see him a lot more forward if we were to keep playing him. For some reason, Ange has a, this affection for Bissouma, and no matter how bad he plays, no matter mistakes he makes, he seems to consistently get started. And for me, he's another player that I think should be dropped. I think we should be starting with Hoybier. Do you think he's got brain fog? I don't know, probably, or something's going on because... His performances have been bad. Let's let's call it out for what it is. They've been shocking. And it's limiting the team. When you have Saar, who's playing well, you drop Saar. Yeah, you bring on Hoybier, La Celso, Bentico, who play well. You only start one of them, which was Bentico. And it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's really bad the way he's playing at the moment. And I just feel like he's another player that needs to be dropped now. Especially in this running, because he's he just doesn't look like at any point he's going to get better. The problem is, you know, Hoybier is a good player, very 
underrated by most of the squad. People forget he was the main staple diet for Conte and Mourinho. There's a reason for that, because in their system, in 90% of systems, Pierre Hoiberg is a good player. Yeah. In yeah. this system, no. But he exposes everybody in this system. So, yeah, Bissa, um, I'm a bit shocked, but no, not good enough. You're going to be our backup or you're going to be gone. One of the two. Yeah. Um, my next one will be uh, Pedro Porro, who I used to call the pantomime defender um, when he first signed, uh, before we signed him, because the defender was always behind him. Um, he's behind you. And that's why I called him the pantomime defender. Yesterday, again, he's exposed. You know, yeah. going forward, Pedro Porro is fantastic. Dynamic. Great cross through the ball, great free kicks. You know, as a wing back, fantastic. Yeah. Udoji as a wing back, fantastic. Again, it's the system. They're trying to learn a system to play inverted, which is alien to their being. And I think he struggles with it sometimes. He really does. Yeah. Um, as they all do, in fairness. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I see when Porro went down yesterday. I I thought Ange would, you know what I mean, in the position we were we were in, he'd yeah. go to a back three. I thought he'd bring Andre Goose in, he'd drop Verma, put a doggy at the top, and use him and Brennan as wing backs, right? Yeah, that's what I thought he was going to do, but he didn't. He just put Emerson on there, and for me, Poro, like you're saying, Poro is a wing back. A doggy's a wing back. If and people are going to hate me saying this, and please understand what I'm trying to say. If Conte or a Jose had this exact team, <laughs> the players would be more effective. Do you get what I mean? Because of the yeah. way they are designed to play their football. I totally With Ange, get they're still in a huge transition phase. They're still learning. So for me, next season, we should be we should be 10 times better than what we are this season, which could only bode well for us, especially considering the position we are. But it, it's it's it, it's a it's a worry. See, Poro, he couldn't defend. Now that's one part of his game he has upped a lot. You got to give credit to Poro. No, he has game. improved. I'm not saying. Yeah. Listen, I'm not going to say he hasn't improved because he has. But what I'm saying here is, I feel the system exposes him. I think you know, um, that's what I'm trying to say here. Mm. You know, I think yeah. But if system... you're gonna, as well, Johnny, do you think this? If you're going to use inverted fullbacks, right? Do you think at times a manager will say overlap? We've seen it a couple of times when Brennan came on and we were losing and Brennan came on and uh, Porro started overlapping Brennan. And we were, that's where everything was coming from. Him and Brennan worked so well at that point where Porro was overlapping. But then against Newcastle, Ange was literally shouting at Brennan as he moved in. Brennan moved in, I think it was like 10 yards in. Ange was shouting at him to stay wide. But he was completely ineffective wide. I, listen, I can't disagree. I, 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 for me, when I, when we first signed him, when I looked at Y Scout before we signed him, because I looked at him prior, and I said, you know what, he would be great if you played Emerson at right back. This is before Ange came or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see him at right back because he's better defensively in Conte's old system, and play Pedro Porro as the right winger instead of Kulu, because he can cross the ball with his right, he's aggressive with the ball, and he's great at free kicks. I just think he's more dangerous, adds a, a more dangerous uh, dynamic option up front. Obviously, yeah. that was never happened. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I think he was on the ground yesterday and was happy to come off. <laughs> Probably, yeah. He saw Probably. what was coming. Can I just say to you, look, what's going to happen? We're gonna we're gonna be inverted against Arsenal with no Pedro Porro. <laughs> that that that's not see see for me that's the perfect game for Ange to go to a back five. Use three defenders, use Adogi as a wing back, and use Brendan as a wing back. He'll be able to do it, and that's the only that's the only way I can think of it. You know what I mean? Or even I mean even say say put Kulu as a wing back. He's done it in the past. We've seen that, and when he's on it, he can do it. But yeah, it's. I think that Arsenal game is going to be a big. When, big was worry. Last, when was he last on it? Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm about to defence. He might. 
Let's go to Cooley because you've introduced him, right? Yeah, okay, he, he let's go. Well. He came on, he came on, did nothing, lost his man, didn't do anything with the ball, and lost Shah for the uh, for the for the uh, for the goal for the f- uh, fourth goal. Um, I don't know what's happened. He did an interview saying how great it all was, and it was like the kiss of death because since then he's been shambolic. Honestly, I I don't know it, it, everything. Is going wrong. He's come on a sub. You know, there was a, a, an incident in the game when we were at West Ham. He came on. We had a breakaway. He had two players breaking free. He couldn't even beat his man to pass the ball to any of the two. Um, he made a terrible decision as well uh, in another section of that game when he came on as a sub. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I don't know what's happened for me. If Conte goes to Napoli and they want Kulu, you have him and we'll have uh, Kavashnili. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll give you... Straight swap, Kulu, straight swap. Kulu plus cash. I'll give you Kulu plus <laughs> yeah. 30 million, right? Yeah. Let's have a proper, proper winger. Go on. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree on the whole Kulu front. I mean, he's still our most creative player in chances created, but his overall game is terrible at the moment. He's, he's, he seems to have lost his strength. He's lost his feet. He's lost everything. I mean, at the beginning of the season, Kulu was fantastic. He really was, but this coming to the end, I don't know if it's the fact that he keeps getting dropped for Johnson and it's affecting him that way or something. But you know, if you're getting dropped, you come on the pitch and you perform. So you're not dropped again. But you're not. Was he you're... fantastic though? Was he? Was he fantastic? Well, he's created what is this? Fifty-six chances he's created. I mean, no, but I mean, we, 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 did you not find? Did you not find him frustrating with the cutting in every time onto his? Yeah. Okay. Foot? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, his cutting in is frustrating. I mean, I have seen a couple of times him trying to use his right foot, but that's like. You know what I mean? Levy spend an hundred million pound a player. It's rare and never yeah. going to happen half the time. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a situation like that. But yeah, I agree. I can agree with that. Yeah, at times he is frustrating, but he can create chances from doing that. You know what I mean? If we had better attackers up front at times, he would probably have had better goals and assists. No, no assists. two ways about that. You know what I mean? But yeah, he is frustrating at times. He really, really is. Um, Playing in the middle, though, we've seen him try and do that. And again, he was struggling. He just, he's completely off it. His form has dropped. And, but we didn't we see that in the concert? I remember him, he was on fire at times. And then his form just completely dropped for ages. It just seems like this one's a longer stint for him. I've got to be honest with you. I personally uh, was calling for him to go into the middle of the park. Um, but seriously, he, he has not, he's just not done it. He's just not done it for me. Um, yeah. So, no, is the answer for me yeah. on that one. I agree. Um, and uh, players, I think Who that's it, got? really, isn't it? I don't know. I think I'll, I'll bring Timo, it up. rubbish. Timo, Timo rubbish. Timo, yeah. Timo, rubbish. Timo's rubbish. Now, I, listen, I was, I was saying uh, I was clipped. I was on We Are Top TV, and I said that I think we should keep Werner. I'm not going to change my mind on one game because he, he has to get in the ball in, but he has to work on his finishing. It's is just shocking. Everyone was bad yesterday. Let's not beat around the bush. If we've missed someone out yesterday, Romero wasn't good. Um, you know, the whole midfield was poor. Destiny was poor. Um, there wasn't anyone that was good, including Ange. Let's yeah. go to Ange. Yeah, yeah. Just quickly, though, a hey, user again. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Sorry, Kulu does not run on Duracell to left legs. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Oh, yeah, son. There we go. Sorry. We did. did I'm sure we, we did talked about son. Yeah, we did son. Yeah, we've we done yeah. son. We yeah, have done, done son. son. Basically, absolutely terrible. Can't hold the ball. Can't do nothing at the moment. And uh, should be dropped, to be fair. It really is. I mean, I'd even start Dane Scholar up front at the moment because he's trained as a striker. You know, yeah. it's. It's, that's how bad it is at the moment. It's yeah. I think Captain Scarlet would be doing better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I so, mean, listen, uh, we were all poor. Let's let's not dress it up. Yeah. You know, 
our favourites, the ones you love, the ones you hate, they were all bad. Rubbish. Right? There were some that were Rubbish. worse than others. Mickey had his worst ever game in his shirt. We all know that. But they were all bad. All of them. Yes. Seriously. Even, even uh, Big Vic wasn't great. There was some of his positional uh, stuff that I thought for the... Exact out the back as well. He was yeah. sketchy at times. He was nervous. Well, they weren't offering themselves. He tried to play the no, ball out yeah, the back true, again, yeah. and that wasn't working for him. So, yeah. So, next, uh, I mean, it's what? Special mentions? <laughs> no, we've done special mentions. That is special mentions. Yeah, there you go. Special mentions. There we go. Uh, and last thoughts on, because we'll hit the hour of five minutes more. Last thoughts on Ange Postacoglu. Let's do that. Oh, no, Ange, 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 Ange. So, Ange, um, you know, having seen that uh, yesterday, are you concerned um, how you might be playing when you, you know, we've got Arsenal and Liverpool coming up? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Mate, what are you giggling about, right? We just got trounced 4-0. Look, <laughs> yeah. um, he doesn't care about fourth place. Um, I, I think that... Uh, um, old chairman Mal Levy um, was probably having a meltdown in his office when he heard that. I don't care about fourth place, right? Because his whole life is revolves around fourth place. Look, as a as a man, as a you know, great, um, as a man who is tactically refusing to change. I'm struggling with it at the moment. I really am. Adapt or die. You know? Yeah. Okay? Simple as that, right? You are not the Messiah. You're a coach. You're a good coach. But you're in the big boy league now. This isn't Japan, where you were the Man City of Japan and you were with the Man City of Man uh, Australia. And, you know, you were with Celtic. We've only got two teams up there. This is the land of the big boys, right? You can't come here and say you've reinvented football and you found a system that no one else plays. It's a hybrid of Ange, uh, sorry, of Pep. I remember, you know, they asked him if he's been copying Pep. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, that question yeah, yeah. That asked of him. And yeah. uh, look, all I know is those first 10 games, teams were struggling to find us out. They've worked it out. And as Gary O'Neill said, you know, this is how you beat Tottenham. He laid down the blueprint live on TV. And others have tried to use that same blueprint. If you have fast wingers that can counterattack, you're going to cause us absolute havoc. It's as simple yeah. as that. And they That's are. <coughs> so, Tony's brought a question in. Do we think we'll win against Arsenal? No, I don't. Well, you no. know what, Tony? You, you know the interesting thing about all of this, right? As much as everything I've said, I think we're unbeaten against the top six. No, top fair. Yes, we are. We are, yeah. The top four? Actually, yeah. Top, uh, top, uh, I don't know. No. Is it top four? You know, we haven't been beat. We weren't beaten against Arsenal. We could have won. We beat Liverpool. And we drew with Man City. Okay. Yeah, the fact I mean, that we, we've only played them three times. I know, yeah. But, the fact we've got to play them three times again is scary. Yeah, but the truth of the matter is, these are teams that are coming. They will be open. But I do believe that we need Richie back, whatever anyone thinks. I know they hate yeah. him, but, you know, I think we do need him back. Thoughts, David? Yeah, um, I agree with you on that sense. If, if Richie's starting against Arsenal, I think that'll be much better. I would put Sonny out on the wing. I would adjust the midfield. I'd get Sar in there just because he can run, 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 run. And he, you know what I mean? Pressing Arsenal is going to be a big thing. Um, defensive wise, if Porro's injured, I'm sorry, there's no way I'm starting Emerson. I would go to a back three. I really would. Or I'd use the Greece in there just because then you've got that player to actually get in the box for headers because we don't have anyone. Do you know what I mean? Oh, just I mean, quickly. You're going. You what? What you're just saying, right? As we mentioned before, you know. Can you imagine? Um, we we often see it under Conte system where Romero would step into the midfield, right, to help out the midfield. Why can't we have that situation where he does that in a back three, and for yeah. say one of the midfielders or one or one player, 
Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I agree on that. But you, you, he needs to use Ragusin. I know he played him out of position. He still didn't do too bad. So with what Paul injured... One, what, what was that last one? Arteta never changed his ways in the first couple of seasons and got hammered a lot. I mean, he's so not wrong. Think, no, you're not wrong. But are you saying, right, that he doesn't... Look, Andrew's, sorry, Eric Dyer has stated that he doesn't do tactics. He does mentality and tells them how he wants to play. Don't worry about the opposition. Don't worry about the time on the clock. I want you to play from first minute to the 95th the same way. Um, so what you're saying is install the mentality, forget about the tactics no matter what. It's part of the progression. I don't know. I mean, it's OK when you don't have a paying audience that are paying the most ever you know, for, for football game, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, you know, if you were going to a show, David, and you're going to the West End Theatre and you paid a hundred quid for a ticket and the show was a pile of sh right? I'd want would, a you not come out, would you not come out and say, whatever you do, don't go to that show. It was the biggest pile of crap <laughs> I've ever seen in my life, yeah. right? And you go, the actor on my life, you want to hear this story, right? That's what you do. That's what we are yeah. as humans, right? We analyse, we pay a load of money, we go there, we pay our money, we make our comments. Yeah, yeah. So there's a question for you, John. Do you think we'll win a game this season? I'll tell you what, even Sheffield United and Burnley are going to be tough. <laughs> um, They're fighting for their lives, aren't they? If we have so... to win one game, look, I, my fear, my fear is we lose against Arsenal and we end up beating or getting taking points out of Man City. So Spurs, taking points out yeah. of Man City and Liverpool and handing Arsenal the title. I can't handle I can't handle Arsenal winning anything. I really can't. I really can't. Um I, I wish them ill. But listen, they've managed their season fantastically. You know, they've got no injuries. They play more games than us and a high intensity than us. And they got no injuries. They use every dark art known to man, diving, screaming, rolling, crying, <laughs> writing letters yeah. to the uh, the refs association. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. What, what do you think? I, I think we'll win. I think we will win two more games. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more positive. I really am. Two wins and one, and two wins and two draws. I'm going to go for. I, I think. I think we're going to get. I think we're going to win three games. I really do. I think a North London derby. I said this uh, on Morning Brews with Ben. When it comes to games, anything can happen. You look at um, say any other games. You could be at your worst form in literally not win a game. You go into a derby. It changes completely. It's like a final. And for me, I feel like we will turn up in that game against them. Winning or not, I don't believe we will, but I think we'll turn up against them. But I know I just got that feeling we're going to do Burnley, we'll do Sheffield United, and for some reason we'll end up beating Bloody City, like you said. And it'll be so Spursy of us to do that, <laughs> you know? But at the end of the day, you know, this season, no one thought we'd be in the position we are. Most of us are upset because we know we could be better. And that's the problem. We know if certain things were adjusted or changed, we could be in a better position. And yeah, I, I'm going, I'm, I'm saying we're going to at least win three of the last remaining games. And those games, I mean, listen, if you could win two games, are you going to ask me who they're going to be against, right? Listen, we beat the great Spurs team, Ange Ball, right? We played Sheffield United with their, the, um, the, the horrendous manager who had the most horrific tactics. We beat them in the 96th or 97th minute at home, right? They were conceding six, five, six goals a game. They could look how many goals they've conceded. We couldn't, we couldn't even break them down yeah. with our great team. So yeah. I would say I'd love us if we could win two games more than any, it would be. Uh, Arsenal and Chelsea. If we only had to win two, those would be my two. If it yeah. helped Arsenal lose the title. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that, Johnny. I really would, mate. Yeah, I'd say I'd, I'd rather lose them than, you know, 
Burnley are bang in it, guys. I don't know. You know, everyone's written yeah. Burnley off. They are still in with a shout. They are, yeah. Of, they of really are. Up. Yeah, they really are. But anyway, guys, I think uh, we've done an hour and 14 minutes, Johnny. It's been a pretty good one. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Thanks for thank taking you, over, uh, Dave. Thanks for taking yeah. over. I, I, I tried yeah. to subdue my rant because I'll it's... tell you what, if we'd have done this, if we'd have done this, uh, yes, I, heard yes, a of, <laughs> I heard a couple of other podcasts, right, and they've been far worse than me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, I'm quite grateful that uh, we do ours the day after when you have time to calm down and digest it. But even today, for those of you who are brave enough, uh, brave enough to watch Match of the Day, I take my hat off to you. But um, I never watch Spurs after. Uh... Was anyone on last night? Uh, yeah, I saw uh, someone told me actually. Uh, what's his name? The Arsenal old Arsenal defender was on. What's his name? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Uh, Keown, isn't it? Isn't yeah, Keown, can't, right? yeah, can't bear him. Can't bear him. Can't yeah, he was on last so, night. Yeah. Can't stand them, mate. But anyway, thanks for everyone everybody. who's watched. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. This is my first hosting of the show. I think Hit it's the been button, a guys. One. Hit the like button. Yeah, and uh, Johnny, thank you so much for joining me, mate. Uh, it's been a good one. Uh, maybe you'll see me again hosting this. It all depends on Brian's health and uh, whether Ben's available or not. But yeah, so to everyone, thank you very much. Enjoy your day, Johnny. Enjoy your day. Thank you. And uh, we'll do. yeah, and let's just hope. Come on, the Villa. Come on, the Villa. I don't care. I don't <laughs> care anymore, right? Okay, because let me tell you something, right? I don't care if we finish fifth, right? I really don't anymore, right? Because yes. I don't think I think we're going to get murdered in Champions League <laughs> football with this squad anyway. So I don't actually care if we finish fifth. But if Villa somehow get something, you know, Villa were nine to one to win today. That's how confident the bookies are. They got no Douglas oh, yeah. Louise. They got no Douglas Louise. They played Thursday night. Arsenal played Tuesday. Two more days to recover. Injuries, Villa. It's all falling Arsenal's way. Come on, God. If there is one, strike yeah. them down. Let them lose Saliba and Gabriel to injury. <laughs> Let Harry Kane and Eric Von Dyer smash into bits <laughs> yeah. right, on Wednesday. Come Let's on, end on that. There we go. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you Spurs. Catch you all, guys. See you later. See you later.